Hello, and welcome to my study. My name is Neva Green, and today we will be going on an exploration of science, looking at the relationship between farmer and scientist, insect and plant, humans and the earth. Join me as we explore more about science together. Our journey begins here at Anderson Mesa in Northern Arizona. After a long and bumpy ride, the students immediately got out and began collecting data on things like plant height, soil compaction, and insect species abundance and richness. It was tarantula breeding season, so those, like many other creepy crawlies, were out in abundance. This video will focus specifically on insects to see if their biodiversity and abundance is affected by different grazing techniques. Rhonda the rancher, a Northern Arizona native, explains the plots now. My name is Rhonda the Rancher, and I live at Anderson Mesa, which is located southeast of Flagstaff, about 20 miles. We have a beautiful view of the mountains. I absolutely love living there. My parents have been living there their whole lives. My grandparents have been living their whole lives there, and my great-great-grandparents. So you can say it runs in the family. There are my three chickens, high intense grazing, where I let the cows go into this one little area for 24 hours, and they eat as much as they want. Like, they go nuts. And then there is a moderate grazing, where they, you know, the cows come in, the livestock roam around, and they just eat what they want to eat, you know, for any kind of amount of time they want. And then there is exposure, where there are no livestock, so, you know, the grass, the area, you know, they don't see any livestock. And I know what's good for my farm. I don't need no one telling me what to do. I've been doing this for years. I believe my ranch offers a very economical benefit for local businesses of Flagstaff. For example, the Apple Burger. Those burgers are great there because of my livestock, yeah, mm-hmm. And then me, of course, you know, I gotta make a living. I gotta eat too. So, you know, this economic benefit, not just black stuff, but for me. Environmental issues are very complex with very many interest groups involved that have a stake in what happens in the situation. Sometimes opinions can differ from facts and it makes it very difficult to deal with the situation. Today we'll be discovering what the opinions and facts are on insects at Anderson Mesa. Hello there, I'm Dr. Cleopatra. I'm an entomologist, and for those of you that don't know, I love bugs. Quite recently, <coughs> sorry, I'm getting over a bug. I've been studying at Anderson Mesa, and the common bugs that I have found there are grasshoppers and tarantulas and even the common weevil, along with some flies and some beetles. And today I'm here to dispel the rumors as to what's better for the environment. And if those that don't see eye to eye with me, well, about to have a stern talking to, son. In certain situations, conflicts can arise between different interest groups, such as ecologists and entomologists who may care about the environment, and farmers who may care more about their livelihood. Let's look at one of these conflicts at Anderson Mesa now. I don't care what no scientists said. I believe my way is the best way and the most sustainable way. Like, come on, in the high grazing area, the grass is taller, more food for my cows, and a great place for the bugs to live. Actually, as an entomologist myself, I have discovered that there is no correlation between plant height and the diversity of insects, nor the abundance. Unlike other similar studies, the researcher Anderson Mesa could not conclude that there was any correlation between plant height, which is affected by grazing, and insect abundance or biodiversity. The government is in my brain. They are controlling my accent. But I'm from Chicago. What are you doing? You're the one working for the government. Crazy bug lady. Though opinions may differ between the common farmer and the entomologist, we can come to consensus through science that there is no correlation between plant height and insect abundance or diversity. Can we agree to shake on it, ladies? 
Yeah, I guess. We're out of here. Thank you. No, don't, no. I'm Glenda Gray, and thank you very much for joining me on this exploration of science. We'll see you here next time. I'm Addison Mesa. All rights reserved. No cows were hurt in the making of this film. But an entomologist did get herself slapped upside the head, honey.